جزاك الله خير اخي الحبيب بسم الله والحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله رحمة المهدى نعمة المسان وعلى الله ونعوذ بالله من شبه أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا أما بعد As I promise you that we're going to select verses in the Quran from Surah Al-Baqarah then we Insha'Allah, then we go select others' uh, stories from Surah Al-A'raf. Uh, but the, 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 the story of today is the story of Adam alayhi salam. And we're going to have... Uh, general overview of the story and then we we'll go to the details of the verses The story of Adam alayhi salam begins, or the ayah before it, it talks about the creation of heaven and earth, which is ayah 29 from Surah Al-Baqarah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم والذي خلق لكم ما في الأرض جميعا ثم استوى إلى السماء فسواهن سبع سماوات وهو بكل شيء عليم uh, The ayah explains the foundation of the creation that Allah SWT created human being but he created the heaven and earth and he said he created this earth for human being والذي خلق لكم ما في الأرض جميعا that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created all of that was on earth which is on earth for human being ثم استوى إلى السماء فزوهن سبع سماوات وهو بكل شيء عليم and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the seven heaven and he has well acquainted have the knowledge of all of that what is take place in heaven and earth this is it's a very important introduction because the story of Adam alayhi salam is about the Adam alayhi salam become a khalifa on earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remind us before we go to the story of Adams, he is the one who made this earth a subservient to human being. And also the 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 ayah in the by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa huwa bi kulli shay'in alim. Allah have the knowledge about everything about everything. Why that's important? Because it will connect to the story of Adam's and knowledge, the idea of knowledge. Later going to come in the surah. But I want you to go to the story with me, the story from the verse 30 to verse 39, nine verses that talk about the story. Very quick introduction. The story of Adam in the Quran been mentioned in many places. The name Adam, name Adam, been mentioned in the Quran twenty five times. Twenty five times. Seventeen times, seventeen times, it referred to Adam alayhi salam, the human being, Adam. Seven times it referred to Bani Adam, to human being, the children of Adam. Allah is talking about children of Adam. One time, Allah talking about the actually two children of Adam, 
Ibni Adam. Then what the rest of uh, verses in the Quran talks about human beings? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the Quran with Tawbiyah Yuhannas of humankind, which is talking about human race. Or we talk about the origin of human race, talk about insan, insan, uh, a human being. Or talk about the physical aspect of human being, which is the word bashar, bashar. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Adam bashar before he put the soul in it. إني خالق بشرا من طين فإذا سويته ونفخت فيه من روحي فقعوا له ساجدين. I'm going to create the human being, bashar, made of clay. When I fashion him and I put the soul on him, then he prostrate uh, for him. Now, the story of Adam in Baqarah is unique from the story of Adam السلام, in Al-A'raf. Al-A'raf is chapter number 7 in the Quran, and Baqarah is chapter number 2. The story of uh, Adam السلام, being mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah as the longest surah in the Quran, it laid the foundation of community building, how to build a community, because Al-Baqarah is the surah that revealed in Medina. But it's very interesting with Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah Al-Baqarah was not revealed as a whole, not all the surah at one time. It well, revealed five verses at the time. Somebody might ask you, when, was the, when the, the last of Surah Al-Baqarah was revealed? Can you guess the ways? Or my Umrah people? Huh? was revealed as the end of Rasulullah's life. The last verse in the Quran was revealed in Surah Al-Baqarah. Do you know that or not? The last verse in the Quran was revealed in Surah Al-Baqarah. وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ And fear a day that you will be returned back to Allah. This ayah revealed after the ayat of the riba. That shows that Surah Al-Baqarah was going, the entire prophethood was revealed through the entire prophethood, Surah Al-Baqarah. That's why Surah Al-Baqarah, the, the, if, uh, if a person memorized the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi time, was considered a scholar. If understanding and, uh, uh, the, memorize and understand the Surah, is considered alim among the Sahaba. It took almost 20 years to memorize and to apply. But it's very important for us as we think about this story, to think the place, the place of the story in this surah, Surah Al-Baqarah. In the, in the, only, the only place in the Quran where Allah called Adam Khalifa in Surah Al-Baqarah. No, 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 there's no other places call him Khalifa. It's the only place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the knowledge that Allah gives to the, the, the malaika and Adam alayhi salam uh, have more knowledge than the malaika. But I will go to the sur, the ayah itself, the, the ayah, the verses of the story. But this story is about you and I. This is a story about creation versus who went to public school here? Creation verses. What did you study in public school? Evolution. The story of Adam is about creation, not evolution. Although there is an evolution in the creation of Adam alayhi salam. Don't get confused. How Allah created Adam? Hmm? But what, what at the stage, Quran said how he created him. Adam, the first man, human being. From where? No, what, what substance Adam was made from? Huh? Blood clot, that's human being. And, uh, all of us after Adam, alayhi salam. But Adam himself, the first human being. Clay. Allah says in the Quran, Sometimes he created human being from trab. You know what trab means? 
dust, soil. Sometimes he said he created human being from clay. Sometimes he said he created human being from dry clay. Sometimes he says he created human being from water. Which is which? What does he create human from? Is it water or clay or dust or uh, uh, dry clay? From all of them, mashallah. Because sometimes he mentioned one element. One element of it. Water. But water plus dust plus soil create what? Hmm? Clay or mud. Then the clay, if you dry it, it becomes fakhar. Actually before that, Allah said from Hama'in Masnoon. A clay that smell changes. Before he put the clay for a while, then it changes smell. And then you uh, dry it, it becomes dry clay. Before, sometimes he mentioned all the, the, the elements together, and sometimes he separate them. I'm very powerful, by the way, because it tells you that when you break it down, that he says that all of those elements made human being. But when he say water, the body of human being made of what? Our body now. A lot of water. Where the, the most of the water is, the fluid in human being body. Huh? What? In the blood? But also where? After the blood? The muscles? How about the brain? Subhanallah. Well, I want to just to take you through the story, but I want to do, have you to think when you read the Quran, do deep reflections. Therefore, this is a story about our beginning. This is a story about the beginning of Americans, Chinese, the Arabs, South Asian, Australian, did the miss any race? African, of course. This is, the, this is the story of beginning of human family. Very interesting, by the way. If you understand the story of Adam well and have conviction of it, Adam Ali Islam, if all humanity believe in the story of Adam and no three religions have the same reference, Islam, Christianity, and Judaism, then you ask yourself, where does racism come from? If it's really truly you believe in the beginning of humanity from Adam and Eve, if you believe that, you believe that all human beings descended from the same family, then what does superiority come from? Superiority come from what? It's an illusion. That means a person, either a person does not believe in this uh, foundation or these principles of the, the human race in a real sense, or a person does not recognize the diversity within the family. It's one family. You don't accept that diversity within the family. Now, this story in Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, Ayah 29 to Ayah 39, would take us to a dialogue, a dialogue that was prior to our creation. When we were a project, <laughs> all humanity, all of this war, all of this competition, all of these tensions, when we were nothing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling the malaika, he's going to create us. You know, in the Quran, Allah says in the Quran, هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينُ مِنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُوا شَيْءًا مَذْكُورًا isn't a time, was a time that human being was nothing worthy to be mentioned? 
That, by the way, in two levels. One, human as a race. The second, as individuals. In 1950, 1955, 1960, I didn't exist myself. I was nothing to be mentioned. Let me kushay amadkura. Then we come to, to life. Allah bestowed the gift of life upon us. For this uh, ayat is actually taken us before the existence of human being. You ask yourself why this ayat was not revealed in Mecca. Why the ayat of Adam, creation of Adam, alayhi salam, and being a Khalifa was not revealed in Mecca. What in Mecca, what Allah referred to us in Mecca? Mecca and Quran, Mecca and Quran. As insan. He's talking to us about actually our existence, but given highlight, highlighting the importance of us adhering to his message as human beings, and how we were made and created as individuals, and as a human race, but did not give the story because the story of Adam alayhi salam in the Madani Quran is talks about what in which foundation he built a community. The idea of istikhlaf, because in Mecca they were oppressed, where the group of people didn't have any authority. Allah talking about now the authority of human beings over the earth. The bigger concept of being uh, in charge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us uh, have, uh, have a stewardship over the earth. If you think, you and I think, that our story begins with this ayah, then you have to live up to the expectations. You know, some people say, tell me about your heritage. Tell me about where you come from. What that means to you. This ayat make us understand who we are and appreciate who we are and appreciate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about us as human beings. Let's go to the verses. Verse um, at 30, verse 29, I said, it said the stage. Verse 30, Allah says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذ قال ربك للملائكة إني جاعل في الأرض خليفة قالوا أتجعل فيها من يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلم الله سبحانه وتعالى المايتي who has the power to create whatever he wants. And the authority to do whatever he wants. Why are he telling Malaika always that you're going to create you and I? What the business of Malaika into this? With qala rabbuka lil malaika, Allah said to the malaika, to the angels. He said to the angels, inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. After he created the earth, he said, I'm going to create a human being, I'm going to create a creature on earth that to maintain the earth, to worship me on earth. I'm going to come to the word Khalifa in a minute, by the way. Oh, I'm not going to forget that, come to the Khalifa. But the question begins, that why he would tell the Malaika? This is the first uh, story that in the Quran, if you read the Quran in, in, in this Mus'haf order, that it begins with the dialogue. The dialogue between whom? What is the dialogue in this surah? Huh? Did you eat your dinner? That's a problem sometimes. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to whom? The malaik. To Teach all of us the, the importance of dialogue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need to tell the malaika, does he? But yet he teaching us all of us that he, Allah, the creator of the world, talk to the angels. 
whom they Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them in a way that they they will not disobey Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they will They will not uh, the, the, disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything Allah commands them, they do. They never disobey Allah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the malaika, Allah telling them, قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ When your Lord, Allah, our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, said to the malaika, إِنِّي جَعِلُ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً قَالُوا what? What they respond? The malaika. You have to remember, the malaika being created to obey, period. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed them to have a dialogue with him, and they ask Allah a question. They ask Allah a question. That's why uh, Jeffrey Lang, you know Jeffrey Lang? You heard of him? Jeffrey Lang wrote a book, Even Angel Ask. The title of the book, Even Angel Ask. The, the importance of asking, importance of engaging. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that Malaika asked him, he told them he's going to create a, a, a human being. قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُوا فِيهَا Would you create in, uh, on the earth? To the earth. For the earth. أَتَجْعَلُوا فِيهَا مَا يُفْسِدُوا فِيهَا Would you create someone who will create mischief on earth? وَيُسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءَ That will shed blood on earth? How the Malaika knew that? How the Malaika come to know that? Hello? What? Either they come to know because Allah gave them task. What they're going to do watching human beings, riding the hasanat and si'at. They're going to have a task regarding this creation. But they know, you know, this human being have a choice. When they have a choice, they're going to create mischief. Or they have seen the jinn. What before human being? Because jinn was created before human being. You know that or not? Who's created first? Huh? The jinn or human being? What the proof? Iblis. إِنَّ إِبْلِيسَ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقْ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ Iblis was one of the jinn. I'm going to come to it. Iblis was joining the malaika, the angels. Was one of the jinn. For the malaika have record that the jinn have not done a good job before him because they have a choice also. But what the argument then they have? They said, would you create someone who creates mischief and shed blood? What alternative they given? What alternative they have given? They said, Allah, would you do this? And we don't do any bad thing. We can take care of the earth. We are glorifying you. We are praising you. What Allah said to them? Huh? قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ I know what you don't know. He did not say to them, how did you, how comes you ask this question? You should not have said anything to me. He said, قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ I know what you don't know. Do malaika know that or not? Do malaika know that Allah knows more than them or don't? But Allah reminded them, he let, allowed them to ask the questions, and then he reminded them he knows more than they do, to teach all of us that even Allah, who has infinite knowledge, allowed the malaika to ask the question. He did not stop there. What did after that? Huh? What? 
وعلم آدم الأسماء. Now does Allah need to prove to Malaika the point of creating Adam? Does He need to do that? Why He took them into this journey of telling them who Adam is and honoring Adam alayhi salam? Therefore, the first quality of human being the Malaika come to know about is what? Knowledge. And that's a very important foundation in building any community or any civilization. Knowledge. وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا ثُمَّ عَرَضَهُمْ عَلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Adam alayhi salam the name of things. I'm going to take you a little bit back before I come back to this. The word Khalifa. The word Khalifa. Wrongly being understood is Adam is the Khalifa of Allah. Khalifa of Allah. And the word Khalifa is a person who comes after somebody. And Allah does not give his authority to human being. He did not. Human being are the servant of Allah on earth. For the Khalifa here, the, the stewardship Allah gave them on earth to maintain the earth with responsibility and accountability. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not give someone responsibility without accountability. And human beings should do the same. There's no authority without accountability. The word Khalifa or Khalifa I mentioned the Quran about 22 times. 22 times. The only uh, way, uh, time that we mentioned Ja'ru fil ardi khalifa in that context in Surah Al-Baqarah. To Adam alayhi salam. To Adam alayhi salam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in Surah Sa'd, which I'm doing another halaqa in Surah Sa'd, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about Dawood alayhi salam. Dawood inna ja'annaka fil ardi khalifa. We made you as a khalifa, as a child on earth. Don't follow your desire. Rule with justice and so forth. The word Khalifa and Khalaif indicates someone come after somebody. And it, whether the human being come after jinn on earth, whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word Khalifa, concept of Khalifa, to be a person who given responsibility on earth. But it's not the shadow of God on earth. That's a misconception. That is one thing I want you to have in mind. Now, all of us, khulafa, all of us, together as human beings, khulafa, we are generation after generation. And then a human being came after generation after the other generation and they forgot the principles and they didn't establish the prayer and so forth. Therefore, the word Khalifa come from that concept. Unfortunately, the word Khalifa took political continue, uh, concept of it and it went, people went too far with it. I'm not going to discuss it now here, but there's a misconception of the word Khalifa. Pray. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what did he teach Adam? وَعَلَّمَ أَدَمْ الْأَسْمَاءِ I want you to stop in this, underline this. Asma' means what? Names. Allah taught Adam the names of things. عَلَّمَ أَدَمْ الْأَسْمَاءِ كُلَّهَا All the names. Right. What's the difference between names, asma' or af'al? In, in language. Verb and and now, listen to this carefully. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had the authority to name things. And if you name particular things, you cannot rename them. Hello? You hear what I said? If Allah names something, you cannot rename it. 
If Allah did not name something, that may be then allow human beings to create terminologies, uh, like all of this IT <laughs> terminologies. Is human being uh, try to understand codes, don't understand particular uh, aspect of technology, and there's something in medicine, something in engineering. But I want you to, if you don't get anything today from this class, except what I'm going to say now, I'll be very happy. Muslims used to have the leadership of naming things. You study math? What's the basic thing in math you study? Algebra. Who named it? Came after whom? Muslims. We used to have the, the ability to name things and the world go after what we name. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word names in the Quran, because civilization based on naming, whoever controlled the naming and the terminology controlled, controlled the discourse. Now, people sometimes they rename the names and they give it a new meaning. It's not the first meaning that intended for it. You hear what I'm saying? Like alcohol. What people call alcohol? What other names? Huh? Wine and also the spirit. Am I correct? Gambling being called what? Lottery. Have you seen a person say, I'm going to play gambling? You're going to say, I'm going to play lottery. Therefore, renaming things. Now, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, عَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاء Then in Quran, Allah, when he talks about idol worshipping, what he says, إِنْ هِيَا إِلَّا أَسْمَاءٌ سَمَّيْتُمُوهَا أَنْتُمْ وَآبَاؤُكُمْ مَا أَنْزَلَ اللَّهُ بِهَا مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ The idol that you created, the idol that you worship, you are the one who created the naming of it, created the concept of it, Allah does not give you authority to do so. You know what I'm saying? For the Allama Adam al Asma. He taught Adam's the names of things. Allah knows he doctor the name of everything or the concept of things, but he the one who equipped him and in with the names of things. Certain things are fitra of human being. The natural dispositions to know right and wrong sometimes has fitra aspect of it. You're born with that. The divine revelation to make to affirm and confirm the state of goodness of human being. Can I tell you something about names? For example, all the good qualities of human being indicates the goodness is original in human being. And all the negative behavior indicates that the behavior is earned behavior. That's not natural. Can I give you an example? The word iman means to increase. To increase what? To increase the fitra, the goodness in human beings. The word ihsan, it means to do what? To perfect the goodness in human being. The word taqwa, It means to protect the goodness in human being from taqa. Type the word nifaq, hypocrisy, means to destroy something. The word kufr means to cover something. The word shirk, shirk means to add something. You get my point? Therefore, by understanding even the names that Allah has given to the quality, you understand the nature of human being. 
وعلم ادم الاسماء كلها طيب هي از انجلز ثم عرضهم على الملائكه ثم عرضهم از انجلز واي انجل دي نو ذا نيم اوف ثينكس Why the angels did not the name of those things? Allah did not teach them. Why Allah did not teach them? Because it never meant to be for earth. Human being, angels, Allah did not create them to live on earth. He taught Adam, السلام, equipped Adam السلام, with the ability and capability to fulfill the mission being on earth. Therefore, if I don't know a strategy, if I don't know planning, I have not been trained on it, I should leave it to somebody else. The one who knows the names. You get my point? I should say, I don't know this. The malaika, when Allah SWT asked them, قَلَ أَنْبِئُونِ بِأَسْمَاءِ هَوْلَا إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ If you are truthful, that you want to be, have this mission, are you equipped to it? Do you know? Do you know that? We have no knowledge except that knowledge that you have given us. Al-Hakim. Our knowledge are wise. Why the Malaika then use the word Hakim? Why they call Allah Al-Hakim? They know that He knows more than them, but there was that Hakim. That acknowledgement of malaika of what? What hikmah? What the word hikmah? Al hikmah wa du'u shay'i fi mawdi'ihi. To put things in the right places. Oh Allah, you are all wise. You know why I created Adam? He's the right person to earth. We are not, before we submit into your hikmah. Naka anta al alim al hakim. Right? It's not over yet. قال يا آدم أنبئهم أنبئهم بأسمائهم قال يا آدم أنبئهم بأسمائهم أو آدم tell them the names فلما أنبئهم بأسمائهم then when آدم عليه السلام told them the names why is this exercise why آدم has to teach them Allah could have said you don't know the name things let me tell you Allah himself the name of things but he want to honor آدم your father you're my father and to tell us the importance of knowledge The importance of knowledge. Now, look at this honor, honoring Allah gave to Adam alayhi salam. Now he become a teacher of what? Of malaik, of angels. The classroom of Adam alayhi salam is the classroom made of what? Huh? Malaik, angels. قَالَ يَا أَدَمُ أَنْبِئِهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ وَلَمَّا أَنْبَأَهُمْ بِأَسْمَائِهِمْ قال ألم أقول لكم دين I tell you that أعلم غيب السماوات والأرض He told them دين I tell you that I know what is hidden the unseen of heaven and earth وعلم ما تبدون وما كنتم تكتمون I know that what you conceal what you reveal The story is then in the end What next? Now Adam عليه السلام become the teachers of the ملائكة Allah showed them he has the ability, capability to do this mission. Now the endorsement. The endorsement of the mission, the inauguration of the mission is what? Huh? Allah said, I then I commanded, I said to the angel, prostrate before Adam. This is really big. This is very big. The inauguration of the mission of human being begins with angel prostration, prostrating before Adam alayhi salam. That's why a righteous person is better than angels. You know that or not? Better than an angel. A Rasulullah better than Jibreel alayhi salam or not? He's better than Jibreel. صلى الله عليه وسلم is he better than Jibreel or not? he's better than Jibreel alayhi salam when he went to the ascension 
What happened to Jibreel alayhi salam? Isra wal Mi'raj. He couldn't go. There's a particular time he said, I can't do this. Rasulullah then ascended to Sidrat al Muntaha, the highest place possible a, human, a creation can come to. Even Malak could, the angel Jibreel alayhi salam couldn't go there. This sujood is the honoring of you and I as human beings. Can we keep the honor? Can we keep the honor? Right? There's one that does not make sujood. Who was that? Huh? Iblis. Illa Iblis. Except Iblis. Why Iblis did not make sujood? Huh? What? Istikbar. Arrogance. And arrogance stems from also jealousy and envy. Because he believed he's better than Adam alayhi salam. Other verses in Al-A'raf and other verses. He said, I'm better than Adam alayhi salam. What is his argument? What? Made of what? Mother made racism to the core. He said, I'm better than him. He was created from clay. I was created from fire. The problem sometimes, you read in books of tafsir, some of the books, they reverse racism. They say, no, no, but fire is worse than mud and this and that. I said, it's not the point. It's not the point. <laughs> I created a bleach of fire and created Adam from him. Don't try to to argue which better. Because that's what the bliss says. There's the reverse racism even in America sometimes. He says, Actually, Adam السلام, was told that Iblis did not prostrate before him. And you're becoming your enemy. And you become the enemy of all of us. But there are three things in lack of the prostration of shaitan. Number one, this racism. Number two, the arrogance that defending the mistake. You made a mistake? Instead of acknowledging the mistake, defending the mistake. You cannot defend racism. He defended that. The third thing to learn from this is that Iblis was not a malak, was not an angel. And yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he asked the angels to prostrate, that included Iblis. Why is that? Because Iblis was in the company of the angels, and he heard the command of Allah. Allah did not make an exception for him. And some people said to him, if Iblis was not an angel, then the, the command was not to him. I said, you cannot make an argument for Iblis, he didn't make it for himself. He really didn't say like, you said an angel, I'm not an angel. He really said, I did not prostrate. I know that I should prostrate. I did not prostrate because I'm better than him. If we don't argue for him in behalf of a bliss. <laughs> he don't do that. <laughs> Basically. Uh, therefore, he refused to prostrate. After that, Allah says what? Now the begins of the mission. Kunaya Adam Askul Anta Wazawjukal Jannah. Now Adam is not only one by himself now. There's another human being. Who was that? Hawa. And here let me address two issues in theology. Number one, to my sisters, my wife, my daughters, I see my wife and my daughters here, that women are not responsible of the sin of human beings. Because some of the theologians who say it's Hawa that convinced Adam later to eat from the tree. This is not true. I'm going to come to that. 
And because of that, women become pregnant and have labor as a punishment. A'uzu billah. Don't believe this. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make Adam have zawj. Askun anta wa zawjuka al-jannah. What is zawj? Yeah. He didn't say askun anta wa zawjatuka al-jannah. Which is the modern Arabic language for a female. Fawake. Askun anta wa zawjuka al-jannah. Because the word, the word zawj in Quran is uh, gender uh, neutral. Because zawj is the pair of something. You have to function both of them equally as zawj. Zawj. Functioning. You cannot become a zawj of something, a pair of something, if you don't function as a pair. Askun anta wa zawjuka al-jannah. What Allah said to them? وَكُلَا مِنْهَا وَكُلَا مِنْهَا رَغَدًا حَيْتُ شِئْتُمَا Eat whatever you want to eat from the from the the garden. I'm not saying paradise. I'm going to tell you why. Is the Jannah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have Adams and Eve Adam Hawa alayhim salam to live in. Was it Jannah on earth or Jannah in heaven? Huh? Jannah, we're saying what? On earth. Who's saying in heaven? In heaven. Jannah was on earth. Ah. Uh, what is your, are you talking about? This is not Muhammad Majid thinking. This is scholar, classical scholar. Traditional scholar have said that too. The Jannah is the Jannah on earth. Because Allah said what? Inni ja'ilun fil jannati khalifa. Qal inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. Has to begin his mission. Tayyib. But he said al Jannah. It is why if it's in a school until Zoe Jukal Jannah, Jannah was Aleph and Lamb. If it's an Aleph and Lamb, it then has to be the paradise, the Jannah. But Allah used the word Al Jannah in Quran referring to a garden. Ashab Al Jannah in Surah Al Qalam. He called them the companions of the garden. The Jannah was on earth, those young people. The second thing, the Jannah of Akhirah, the Iblis go to Jannah of Akhirah? Iblis, Shaitan, can enter Jannah of Akhirah? No. Can is Jannah of Akhirah in is anything prohibited in it? Nothing will prohibit it. Do not eat from this tree. Then somebody might say, but Allah said, come down. Is that the argument? He came to say, come down. He used the word habitu. Allah used the word habitu talking to the Bani Israel. Go down to Egypt. Were there? There was somebody else in, in heaven or they were on earth? Like you say, I'm going downtown. <laughs> There's no down of town. <laughs> it's expressions. Therefore, that is the argument people use. But is a place of comfort. Was on earth, but place of comfort. Everything was provided on it and so forth. For them. Right. Now, what happened after this? Allah said to them, don't eat from a particular tree. What Allah telling the Muslim community in Medina? It will be certain things being prohibited on you. What not prohibited in Mecca? Alcohol will be prohibited. Uh, you know, the certain meat will be prohibited. Therefore, I want you to obey as Adam, alayhi salam, I ordered him to obey. The tree was not pork. 
is the tree was pork? The tree of Jannah. Shajara, they said haywan. A tree is not an animal. Am I correct? But he said, don't eat from the tree. If Allah prohibits Adam to eat something vegetarian, when he asks us not to eat something of animals, we should listen. If he said, don't drink alcohol, we should listen. He gave the example of this before the tashri'ah, before the laws of alcohol and other was revealed. To prepare the community of the obedience of the commands of Allah. So he, he said, don't eat from the tree. But eat anything else. Shaitan come and says, no, 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 no. That tree, don't miss it. That tree is the amazing thing. If you don't eat from that tree, you don't have a life. You're wasting your life. This is it. You don't have the pleasure. You're missing, guys. The shayateen of human beings telling you that all the time. Try this, you smoke this. You're wasting your life. You try it once, you're gonna be in the next world and you're gonna be in this. Shayateen. Shayateen al insi wal jinn. Making attractive, appealing. Keep on telling you about it. Come and get it. Come and get it if you want to. The shaytan did that. He, not only that, he swore by Allah to them. In other ayahs, I swear by God, I'm telling you good advice. Anyone sells something, you should not swear about it. To begin with. Sell, even selling good things. Don't swear about it. Don't swear when you sell. He was selling them this. Then he used something. It's time for Asia. It's time for Asia. I have to not go to this area in this six minutes. I'm sorry. I'm going to stop here. Because I wanted to do reflections of this ayat. And inshallah, when I come back, uh, I'll, I'll, next Friday, somebody will be teaching a class. The following Friday, I will continue this story. And I want you to think about, give you three things to think about. Why Adam and Hawa alayhi salam accepted the argument of shaitan at the time. What did he use? Read other verses other than Baqarah, somewhere else, because I'm not going to repeat this story in, in this series. I'm going to only discuss it in Baqarah. What are the elements or the things that he used to convince them to do it? And how that related to human behavior today? That will be to be continued. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in knowledge. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us in our life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and our family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expand our understanding of the Quran. An application of the Quran in our life. Uh, there's a, a guest here, Sheikh Abdul Ahad. Is he here? Yes. This is a, a, a gym that in Virginia, Sheikh Abdul Ahad is the Imam of Dar al Nur. Highly respected community, highly respected scholars will give the khatir after Isha. Give him, inshallah, your time to listen to him. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, do have a class, but I'm not going to be teaching the class. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. 
اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاه حي على الصلاه